then we can prove uh, this asymptotical workout, one minus three over one of uh, the So the rest of the time, I would like to sketch uh, the proof of the workout. The upper bounds given in the uh, example. So initially, we were trying to prove, as you can see, when you use the result of the, uh, whenever there's a big book, then all of a sudden, we guarantee to have many, many uh, k four centered in edges. Let me remind you here, if you have big book, then every non edge here, because it's K4-free, so this has to be independent sets. So every non edge in here would be a k 4 centered edge. So at the beginning, we were trying to prove is we we'll try to prove there is this a triangle? We call it fat triangle in the sense that every the two neighborhood in this sense it spans a very big joint book, namely the size of the sum of the size of the book expand by this every edge in this triangle is big. Then you can optimize to get some lower bound. But then this attack uh, doesn't work unfortunately because this. This is a conjecture by Erdős. Says there is this some triangle when you have n squared over four plus one edges, then there should exist such a triangle, such that the size of the joint book, okay, okay, the size of the joint book is at least n over two, okay. And the example is something like this one. Each size, each set vertices of size n over six. As you can see, the floor, every triangle sits in a joint book of size n over two. We cannot do better. And if we only have a joint book of size n over two, then use some complexity of some function, you can calculate the best you can push it up to is one over twenty-four. So this approach doesn't work, unfortunately. What we do instead is the first step. We're gonna take out the largest family of vertex disjoint triangles. Oh, geez. Let me call uh, G prime to be the, the graph after you take out the triangle. So first of all, because of n squared over four plus one edges, we're guaranteed to have a triangle. So we can start take out the vertex disjoint triangles as much as we can take out the maximum size, okay? We call this T. And the remaining graph, let's call it G prime. And since this is maximum size, we know G prime has to be triangle free down here, okay? The whole graph is K4 free. So this has to be triangle free down here. So then we split the, all the K4 centering edge into two kinds. One kind is those incident to the vertex set of this family of vertex destroying triangles. And the other one is those is those lies in G prime. Okay, with both of its endpoints in G prime. So we split into two kinds. And then in the second kind, use some idea from by showing there's a big book. Okay? So the gain comes from the first part, where we can get a, bit, a little bit more from the first part. So let me just call the first type R1 and the second type R2, this ratio. And now we will show how to get some lower bound R1 and R2. So here's what we're going to do. First observation is that in this family of vertex triangle, uh, vertex disjoint triangle T, in this group T, between any two triangles, the number of edges, cross edges, is at most six. Otherwise, we will get a K4. Now we know the graph has to be K4 free. So we can get an upper bound on the number of edges sits in this family of vertex track. Uh, this is not very formal notation, but 
that we all know, you all know what I mean. It means all the edges in this induced part on this vertex set above here. So we can get an upper bound, very small. So this is small. And we, we also know some observation. This is small. And we also know G prime is triangle free. So we can get an upper bound of, let me call M prime the order of G prime. But just by mental theorem, we can get an upper bound. So we can control the number of edges in here. And we know not too many edges up here. What do we know then? We have a lower bound on the number of edges. N squared over 4 plus 1. That's the size of the graph we start with. That means we're going to have plenty of cross edges between T and G prime. <coughs> so the observation is the cross edges is quite a lot. So what we're going to do is for R1, I'll just speed up, what we do is we're going to calculate, since there's a lot of cross edges and similar argument, we can work out with detail. But it's not hard to work out with detail. You can you can, we know that, okay, let me first show you what are the first type of K4 saturating edges. If we have a triangle in script T, and if we have a vertex in the remaining graph, have degree 2 to this triangle, then immediately this vertex will give rise to a K4 saturating edge, this edge, right? And this edge is those incident to the vertex of this triangle. So we use this number of cross edges, we can get some lower bound on the number of vertices has degree has degree two here. You can't have you cannot have degree three because then we create a four. So that the R1 we can get a lower bound here because of uh, many cross edges from from this. Okay? So there's some details we need to work out. And the second type I want to mention is because again there's a lot of cross edges, we can find a large triangle in the sense that this triangle sends, just by average argument, sends a lot of edges to G prime. Okay? Now we can just focus on this triangle, large triangle, and G prime. On this graph, if we focus on this part of the graph, we can get some lower bound of R2, the second type. So if we look at this, we can partition the vertex set of G prime, this triangle free graph, according to their degree to this large triangle. We can partition them to this, let me just call V2, degree 2 to this vertex, and degree 1, exactly 1, and those that has no word neighbors in, this, in G prime. So if we partition it, as you can see, this is the joint group we would like to have here. And because there's many, uh, we already know there's a lot of cross edges on this triangle in G prime, so we know V2 necessarily has to be large. Okay, so there's two more cases where if we only have, if one of these sets, by these three edges in the triangle, if one of these sets has very small joint neighborhood, joint common neighborhood, we only require to be little O of N, then we, we can combine this uh, bound, we can just, we know the lower law on B2, then we can just, if this is the case, we only have two non-trivial ones, then just use the non saturated edges here, Together with the bound from R1, you can somehow work out the detail to get the 2 over 33. Okay, I'll skip those. But then this reduced to a case where these three sets, they're non trivial. It's some abs at least epsilon times n, where epsilon is non zero. Then in this case, what we're going to do is there's a key observation. In this case, if you grab any vertex, let me call x1, x2, x3, this triangle. Then the neighborhood of each triangle, of the vertex in each triangle in G prime has to be an independent set. This is a key observation. Because just look at this neighborhood. If we have an edge here, what will happen is we span a triangle here. And because all the three sets is non-trivial, we also have a triangle here. What will happen is from this triangle in G prime, we get two vertex destroyed triangles. But we know we start it out with a maximal size T. That's a contradiction. So from this key observation, we can just count to get a lower bound of R2. We count the number of non edges in a unit of their neighbors 
inside chip drive. If you count the number of known edges, then this is at most, this is the last part I would like to explain. So we count all the known edges once, except those which are in the neighborhood of two vertices, which is precisely those of the two, of the K4 section of edges. So we use this in order to finish up the proof. 